let's get into that passage for today. So I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Now I want to give a little bit of a background on 2 Corinthians and what was happening there. The Apostle Paul started a church in Corinth. And after he started the church, he stayed there for a while, he left. This church, which had some Jews, obviously, in the church, and also a lot of Gentiles, and the focus was definitely Gentiles, a lot of Gentiles in that church. This church started to get involved in things they're not supposed to involve, be involved with. They started to get involved in sexual immorality and all those kind of things. And Paul then wrote them a letter, and that is 1 Corinthians. He wrote them a letter correcting them on their behavior and told them on how and what they should do and how they should have behaved. He also told them that they should know that they are the temple of God and, you know, knowing, just knowing who they are. He reminds them a lot of who they are. He also talks to them from the perspective of perfection. He tells them that they are complete, they lack nothing and all those kind of things. Yet he was to correct them on many things in their lives. Now, um, after that letter, Paul visited them. That visit didn't go very well. He left and wrote a second letter to the Corinthians, which we don't have today. That letter was a heavy letter, hard, harsh rebuke, and so forth. And then now we find uh, this, the third letter that he wrote to the Corinthians is what we today have as second uh, Corinthians or two Corinthians as some people would say now in this letter he still didn't completely let go of the issues at hand after Paul rebuked them they didn't want to accept him anymore they said that he did not have the credentials of a true apostle and this happened after certain people came in and said that Paul is what you call a loose cannon he was not sent out by a certain group of people he was not part of the original apostles and then some of these apostles the other apostles came in they were very wealthy they were rich they had a lot of money they also had elegant way of teaching which Paul apparently didn't have his presence when he would be uh, amongst people and when he would talk wouldn't be that impressive. He wasn't that good of a speaker, it seems, or as charismatic. Maybe his words wasn't as eloquent. Maybe he used difficult words. Who knows? Uh, I mean, we can just speculate about that. But then there came others, other more charismatic, more eloquent people that could influence the people and and had, they had a great effect on them. These, this church in Corinth then threw money at them and blessed them and all those kind of things and saw them as the true apostles and then said to Paul, where's your credentials? Where, where, where's your letter of commendation? Where, who has sent you? We cannot listen to you. Now, I think that is one of the most painful things that can ever happen to a preacher. When the very people that he has led to the Lord, to whom he gave his life, that he didn't ask for any money, that he worked with his hands, that he was in poverty for them, uh, not willing to be of any burden to them, especially if these people were even wealthy people. So they were even wealthy people. They had money. They weren't like some of the people out in the villages there that was really poor, didn't have anything. This church in Corinth, they, they were well off. They had enough, enough. And they could have cared for Paul, but they didn't. But when the other people came that made a demand on that, they cared for them and shunned Paul. Now we find here in this in this second letter that he's basically expressing forgiveness and so forth. And he's just touching a little bit on um, on some of the things that he mentioned in the previous letter as well. And this is what he is saying. He's talking about how, um, you know, he talked a little bit about ministers of being ministers of the new covenant, also that he wasn't in it for the money and all those kind of things. They had to forgive the, the guy that did wrong, whom they then gave over to the devil, which was mentioned in the previous letter. And he then starts chapter 3 this way. He says, 
Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, like some people, a letter of recommendation to you or from you? So what he's basically saying is, is in the previous two chapters, he was starting to tell them how much he cares for them and what he did for them. And then he says, am I starting now to commend myself? He says, no. He says, are we, as apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul talks about himself now. Do I need a letter of commendation from you? Or do I need you to write a letter to other people and um, tell them that, you know, I can preach there, they, they should allow me? He says, no, I don't need any of that. Now listen to this. He says, you yourselves are our letter written on our hearts. So what he says is that the church in Corinth, which had a very powerful conversion when Paul started it there, there was great signs and wonders. Many people were touched. It was a powerful thing that took place in Corinth. They were really full. They were, they were in need of no gift at all, he says. The only thing that was outstanding in the church of Corinth was not knowledge of any sort, it was just the return of Jesus Christ and bodily glorification. That was all that was outstanding. In the meantime, people came in there and started to preach a law message. They started to bring in a message that was leading them to forget who they truly were. They then started to see all manner of the fruit of the flesh break forth in their lives, and Paul had to remind them again. But Paul doesn't draw on the weakness or some of the, let me put it this, some of the rotten things that happened, the wrong things. He focuses on the good that happened when they started the church. This almost, we can almost call it a mega revival. It was an outbreak of the power of God. He calls on that. And he says that he needs no letter of a recommendation neither to them or from them because they themselves they are a letter that was written in their own hearts so paul is saying that the church in corinth is a letter that god wrote on paul's heart he says and he was now telling this what god did in corinth that was written on his heart to all people and so Many people has come to hear or have the letter that was written on his heart by what God did in Corinth. They had that read to them as Paul testified on what the Christ was doing in Corinth without the law, without the Ten Commandments, without the letters that was engraved on stones. As a result of the new covenant, the new testament that was ministered to them. So what Paul is saying is, I preached Christ unto you. I knew no, nothing but Jesus Christ and him as the crucified one. Meaning, what it means if you say Jesus Christ in crucified, it means I know him not as a political leader of Israel. That's what it means. When you say, I know Christ and in crucified, you are saying, I know Jesus, not as Israel's political leader, but as the one that is bringing life for all people. That is the Messiah over sin and death, but not a political figure that is a political leader for a certain people group. So Paul comes and he knows nothing but Christ and him crucified. He preaches the gospel. He preaches the resurrection. People believed. Their lives are changed. This massive, powerful thing that took place there was then written on his heart. He, his, his, his whole heart, his life was so impacted. It impacted Paul. He then went to other places and testified of what God has done there. In that way, God was writing a letter to other people. This letter was not in the form of the scripture. It was in the form of God writing his life into the lives of the people in Corinth. This is what Paul is talking about. He is saying, are we beginning to commend ourselves? He says, or do we need 
like other people, so he's basically mocking a little bit there, letters of commendation to you or from you, you yourselves are our letter written on our hearts. So it says you were our letter and it's also written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. Now, some people use the scripture to say that everybody is saved. I don't know how they get to that. It's just completely, completely out of context. Verse 3. You show that you are a letter from Christ. The result of our ministry written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Okay, so what is he saying here? He says, and this is a very, very powerful thing, very powerful. Should we understand this, we will really hear God's message from each person by what God is doing in that person's life. We will read the letter of Christ the letter of the resurrected Jesus boldly every day without even reading Bible so much. Listen to this. <clears throat> Let me read it again. I want you to get this. You yourselves are our letter, written on the hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ. So the church in Corinth was a letter from Christ that results, uh, the result of our ministry, written, not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. So God basically wrote a letter about the ministry uh, that he did through Paul and the people that ministered there at that time. Um, and this letter was written in his heart, but it was by the Holy Spirit in what was happening in the lives of the people in Corinth, and then all people could see it. He says, such confidence have we through Christ before God, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competency comes from God. So what he's saying is, what God says about our ministry is written in your lives. So people can see what God did through us by what God did in you. So that letter has got two messages. It's a message of the wonderful thing God did in the church in Corinth, as well as a confirmation of what God did through the apostles. Let's, let's read on. This letter is written by the Spirit. It's written by the Spirit. It is not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills and the Spirit gives life. What Paul was saying is, that which the results in your life was not because of me bringing you the law. The results that other people can see and what they can testify of in what happened to you is not because I brought you the law, but because of the power of Jesus Christ, the Spirit. I would like to read this to you from the... Um, from 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Before I read that, let me quickly just summarize what I want to say. What I'm saying is, is that Jesus Christ wrote a letter in what he did in the lives of the Corinthians. The way Jesus wrote this letter was very simple. It was by bringing the life of Jesus forth in the church in Corinth. This was a letter of commendation basically about Paul, but also a letter written and known of all people on the new covenant. It was a message to all people, not a law, but a message to all people. And we'll get more into that. Let us read now from the message. It says here, does it sound like we're patting ourselves on the back, insisting on our credentials? Asserting our authority? Well, we're not. Neither do we need letters of endorsement, either to you or from you. You yourselves are all the endorsement we need. Your very lives 
or a letter that anyone can read by just looking at you. Christ himself wrote it. Not with ink, but with God's living spirit. Not chiseled into stone, but carved into human lives and we publish it. So the church in Corinth is Jesus' letter. We don't have one letter here written by Jesus. Jesus was on the earth for three years in ministry. We don't have one piece of writing that he wrote. We don't have one piece of writing that he wrote. Nothing. We have what Peter wrote. We have what Paul wrote. We have what James, James did. We have, have what Luke did. But we don't have. We had what John did, but we don't have any writing that Jesus did. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Wouldn't it have been wonderful if we could have had a letter that was written by Jesus unto his disciples? I'm not talking about a super spiritual interpretation now saying, no, 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 the whole Bible is God's letter. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something Jesus wrote. We don't have that. But here we see that Jesus did write. Jesus did write. And we can read it. Let me read it again. This is exciting because Jesus is still writing today. So you can have a letter from Jesus today, written by Jesus personally. Not even then on paper that you read later. You can read a letter that Jesus writes today. You can read it today, which he will write today. Not old news. You can even see how he's writing it. Being very, being in the presence of Jesus while he writes that. Imagine you could have had, you could have been where Jesus was while he was writing a letter, seeing his handwriting, seeing exactly what he wrote, and then after he wrote that and signed it, he gives it to you and he says, read my daughter, read my son. Wouldn't that be special? Well, I want to tell you that's happening today. But what we're seeking for on how it happens and how he writes is what we need to look at. We need to look, we need to look at what the true ink is. Here he says, Christ himself wrote it. He says, you are God's letter. Christ himself wrote it, not with ink, but with God's living spirit, not chiseled into stones, but carved into human lives, and we publish it. We cannot be more sure of ourselves in this, that you, written by Christ himself for God, are our letter of recommendation. He says, you... What God has done in you is a letter to all people on what God has done and on our ministry. That is what he says. We wouldn't think of writing this kind of letter about ourselves. Only God can write such a letter. His letter authorizes us to help carry out the new plan of action. The plan wasn't written out with ink on paper, with pages and pages of legal footnotes. What God had in plan was written out in the lives of the Corinthian church. Not with, with laws killing your spirit. It's written with spirit on spirit, his life on our lives. That's how God writes. Isn't that absolutely amazing? It's absolutely amazing. 